Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, my name is Jeff. Uh, I am the administrative coordinator for NoBrow, uh, and um, I guess I'm a sort of the representative for NoBrow here, and uh, I'm going to be moderating the panel today. This is the uh, spotlight on uh, Luke Pearson, Philippa Rice, Sam Bosma, and Callie Seesmeyer. Seesmeyer, right? Yeah. Excellent. Um, cool. So um, maybe why don't we just start with uh, just briefly introducing ourselves just down the line, I guess? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm Luke Pearson. Uh, I draw comics and illustrate. I'm Callie Seesmeyer, a ghost today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. My voice is gone for this panel, but I will try my best. I'm an illustrator. Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm also an illustrator. I do comics. Uh, I work in animation. Okay, great. Cool, so um, I'm just running the slideshow with just a bunch of art from all of these great people and great artists. Um, so I guess um, we're just gonna you know, talk about art and the process and all that. And so just to kick things off, since we're at SPX, SPX seems to be like one of the big like social, more social uh, conventions, I, I think, but just because everybody's holed up in the same hotel room. Um, so we're kind of forced to it. But um, one thing that I've, uh, one thing that uh, I, I've noticed with, uh, with the illustration and the comics and art scene is uh, how supportive everybody seems to be, but also how competitive everyone is with each other. So I was wondering if uh, you guys would uh, be able to speak on like, how uh, your connections with, uh, with each other and with the people in the art and illustration scene kind of drive you or how it affects your work, if at all. Um, yeah, I don't know, uh, whoever has anything to say <laughs> about it? Well, I think that the the competitiveness sort of feeds into the community a little bit. Like, everybody kind of wants to be succeeding, and so they get competitive. But it's not a competitiveness where we want anyone else to fail. Because in comics, like, I don't know, you sort of have to be kind of inclusive to everybody in the community because it's a small community, and it's a... Uh, it's a hard job to have, and so the more tightly you can sort of invest yourself with the people, the better it'll be in the long run. And as artists, it's really easy to admire other people's good work, too. I mean. Yeah, yeah, you just, you wanna be doing the same thing. And you want everyone else to do all of their awesome work so that you get to read it and look at it, too. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, is, the, is there uh, anybody in particular, like at SPX, that you've like just discovered or are excited about? Uh, that you've seen this weekend? This weekend. I don't know about this weekend, but I feel like every every SPX, or like every uh, comic artist who I've been really into, uh, I've met almost at, uh, exclusively at SPX. Yeah. Do, you, do you think um, that, uh, I, the, the way I discovered uh, pretty much all of your work really was through like Tumblr and, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I first saw all of your guys' stuff. Um, Tumblr has been uh, pretty huge for you guys, I would say. Would, would you agree with, with that assessment? <laughs> like, do you, do you find that like your fan base has really like developed through, through that? Uh, or, is, or, or, is, or do you feel like things in Tumblr have kind of changed to a point where like, uh, I, I feel like Tumblr is all about sharing the images now, and there's like controversies about like not accredit crediting your sources or whatever. Do you think Tumblr has kind of like gone by the wayside with regards to that kind of thing? I don't know about gone by the wayside, mm -hmm. but I think people are less into it now than before. Mm -hmm. But it's still like you know really useful mm -hmm. and stuff. But yeah, Tumblr's been really good for me. Uh, I think certain things d do well on there more than other things, mm -hmm. but it's got that that competitive thing again with you know all the notes and everything, right. like, uh, and it's sometimes you have to not really think about it too much. Okay. Um, just I guess changing gears here, um, since we are, have all like this art that's flashing through the screen. Um, one thing that I really appreciate about all of you guys' art is how you are all able to evoke 
just such a vibe and such a like uh, very specific moods to each of your pieces, um, and I feel like uh, like that's one of the things whenever I see um, like something that like Sam has done where the environments are all so specific, but it's all just conveyed in the one image. Like, what are your favorite ways to go about like just uh, evoking such uh, such a world and such a range of emotion with just like the one the one illustration. Um, I think it's just the approach to it. Like, if I'm doing a single image, I have to think to myself, okay, like how can I make as many aspects of this image work towards my goal? Like, which is to, you know, either evoke a scene or some sort of like uh, hints towards a story, that sort of thing. And I have to kind of look at every part of it, whether it's environment, whether it's like prop detail, whether it's character design or any of that stuff. And just try and, sorry? Yeah, just all those sort of world building elements just sort of have to all hint towards the common goal. It's just a lot of little little things that build together to kind of evoke something larger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like specificity in illustration is always um, helps to build a story more and like, whether it's finding lots of references for things or creating rules for like the world that you're making, like right. having specifics is always good. Right. Just um, making del like really deliberate choices. Yeah. I remember um, seeing an interview, I think with, with you, Kelly, where you were talking about approaching illustration as a problem solving, uh, in a problem solving kind of way. Um, could uh, I'm interested in that idea the, as like, do you think having sort of restraints on like your more uh, work for hire or editorial type things it allows you to uh, just think more creatively with your work or um, I'm interested in that problem solving idea. Yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes it can, I mean, anytime you have rules or guidelines that you have to follow, uh, I think it sort of makes you push towards something that still feels like you but also fits these other guidelines mm -hmm. and that sort of a relationship is feels fulfilling when you're able to get when you're able to like make something work that feels good and fulfills the job that you're doing but is also something that's true to who you are um, and I think that's sort of the whole reason why I went into illustration it feels good to solve problems right um, now now Philippa with with your stuff uh, one thing that I think is uh, that kind of sets you apart from uh, uh, the rest of the artists uh, is that you have so many different disciplines that you work with and so many different media that you use um, in keeping with like you know being true to like what you want to say like do you think like different mediums uh, allow different media allows you to express different things like when you create a project do you say oh I want to make this uh, my cardboard uh, my cardboard life thing or this feels like something that would be better as an animation? Like, how, how do you go about that? Well, I feel like normally if I've, if I've written an idea, then the medium that I use is whatever will sort of suit that best. Like, if it's going to be funny, then I'm going to, I don't know, use something that enhances that or something. And like with Sophie, like the autobio kind of romantic stuff, I want, want to keep it like quite simply drawn in plain colours and to make it more, I don't know, <coughs> something more simple, like to highlight the simpleness of what I was trying to say. And with the animations, it's like, I, I mean, I, I don't really choose the medium. It's more like the idea and then what what's going to reflect that best. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, with, with the animation things, it really just started with because I'm really into like craft and crocheting things, and then I just wanted to make them move. Right. But it's, yeah, quite separate to comics, really, mm -hmm. um, because most of the comics that I've made, I wouldn't be able to animate. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you, um, do do you guys uh, feel that way about uh, your illustration work versus your uh, comics work? Like, do you do you see something like in an illustration and like, oh, I wish I could pull like a comic out of this or you see like your comic and do you think sometimes like the story could have just worked better as an illustration? Do you have regrets is what I'm getting at. <laughs> no one 
wants to step into the bath <laughs> <laughs> and admit all of their regrets. That's fine. That's a pretty heavy question. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, well, okay, like maybe maybe not so much like your regrets, but like um, I know that uh, to some degree you guys all kind of put yourself into uh, your work and like your, you play off of your experiences. And, like with Philippa, your uh, Sapi comic is like, directly uh, uh, a, a comes from your your relationship with uh, with Luke, um, but throughout, uh, and like with, with Luke, I feel like with some of your other stuff that isn't Hilda related, there's a very <coughs> sort of self-consciousness about how you uh, approach a story and um, uh, and how you, how, you, how you want to get your idea out of you. Like there are illustrations I've seen where it's, there's one where there's a girl lying on her back and there's just ideas just kind of like dancing around in her head and they're all very colorful, but um, it also, it feels like sometimes ideas may be overwhelming or burdensome and I, I don't know, like is, it, do you find that uh, the comics and the illustration that you guys do is a way to work through your own feelings about how you approach art or um, or how, or are you working through, like, are you working through anything with your comics? Is it a therapy for you? <laughs> <coughs> I, I am sometimes, uh, like, it depends what the, the comic is, really. I mean, I did, like, a comic I saw came up on the screen at some point. Um, that was kind of, like, about, like, generating ideas mm -hmm. or... Um, like it's a comic where like a guy goes around like collecting these little characters off the floor and then he just kind of puts them in a box um, and he wants to kind of, it's like a silent comic and it's not totally clear what his, what his game is but he's, um, he basically just kind of like pairs them up in different ways and like tries to kind of provoke them to do stuff and none of it's satisfactory. Mm -hmm. um, at the end he's kind of threatens to just throw his pet rat in the, uh, in the box to potentially just eat, just kill them all. Uh, and that was kind of meant to be about me not having, for not liking any of my ideas <laughs> for comics. So, so yeah, that, that was a pretty direct reflection. <laughs> um, I, but I'm interested in, in that kind of thing just because I feel like it's a topic that a lot of cartoonists like to go to, their frustrations with their ideas. And I'm, I'm just interested in how you, you guys all have different approaches to how you create your art. And I'm, I'm sure eventually you end up in like a creative rut and I, I, I'm just interested in how people get out of, out of those things. I think it's just sort of examining like what kind of work you, you like to consume and like whether there's a space, you know, between that and what you like to create that hasn't been filled somewhere else. Like a lot of my comics are, you know, writing is born from the frustration of like not finding that stuff out there just for me to easily just consume forever. Um, what? Um, <coughs> for instance, like, uh, I don't know, I wasn't finding f like fantasy stories that were like kind of fun and like just like a little bit thoughtful without being really like a like straight kind of medieval -y stuff. And so making those it sort of became a priority for me. Um, and Sam wanted to get all of his friends into basketball too. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I made a basketball comic because none of my <coughs> friends liked basketball and I wanted, uh, <laughs> I wanted to force them to engage with the thing that I liked. <laughs> so, it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of selfish in that regard. It's yeah, like it works out. No, it was, it's, I mean, all my stuff is super selfish. Like it's made for <laughs> selfish reasons and, but um, it didn't, it didn't work. Like a, a lot of the reviews and stuff in my comics, like or e even f informal stuff, like people, what people would say to me on Twitter, were like, "Oh, I really like this comic. Like, uh, I don't give a shit about basketball, <laughs> 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 but I really like this comic." Uh, and I guess that's supposed to like be a compliment that it was really good, so they liked it anyway. But to me, it's just like, well, I failed then. Like, I, didn't make, <laughs> I didn't make you like basketball, and so like the comic was. <laughs> 
do you guys ever feel like uh, with like this sort of vindictiveness to that approach, I guess, of, of like um, forcing someone to enjoy the thing? No, like, I think that's just like, me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with, uh, with all of your guys' work, um, I, you all have very definitive styles. And um, do you feel that um, your styles, to some extent, uh, do you ever feel, uh, I don't know, pigeonholed by your style? Like you feel like you want to tell, like maybe, like like for, for Luke, for example, like maybe you don't want to tell another Hilda story. Maybe you just want something like mean and violent <laughs> instead of like an uplifting story about a teen girl who's having, or little girl who's having adventures. <coughs> like, do you guys ever feel like you're boxed in by, uh, by, by the work that you've set up for, your, for yourself, the work that you've done so far? I kind of, um, I actually don't in a way like you'd think I would, um, <laughs> but uh, no, I feel it's more like, it's not that I feel pigeonholed, it's more that I kind of worry about people's, just worry about what people expect of me, it's kind of like self-imposed, like no one really makes me do anything in particular and I kind of, I don't feel like I have a style, I guess, um, but I do try to kind of change it up quite a bit. And I feel like, particularly in illustration um, and in my like personal work, I've I can I can do stuff that doesn't look totally like stuff I've done before, and um, I can get away with it, and people seem to like it. Um, yeah, I do. I, but I like worry about things like if my next comic was like super violent and. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I wa what I want to do, but like I always just like imagine in my head like the, the, the next comic is just gonna be the most grossly uh, <laughs> obscene, offensive thing. <laughs> like it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. But I'm always like <laughs> slightly resenting that I'd feel bad about doing that. <laughs> I probably should feel bad about doing that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. You're all you're like just preemptively cutting out your yeah. rebellion. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I feel I feel a little bit trapped sometimes, just in terms of like with illustration, like the kind of work that you do or that you have in your portfolio is the kind of jobs that people will hire you for. So, to some aspect, like you sort of have to choose what you want people to like hire <coughs> you for and what you want to be seen as, and sometimes that changes over time, and I think that's totally natural for that to happen. And I know that for me, like. I don't know. I like swing back and forth in terms of like the style that I want to use or the types of stuff that I want to illustrate. And I'm at a point now where I sort of want to make a bigger change. Um, and like Sam has been at that point before too. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you start getting that feeling of being trapped or like being dissatisfied with what you're doing, at least it kind of lets you know that now is the time to like change things up if you need to and like try something different, even if what you've been doing is working. Do you think that's more a realm for like your personal projects? Like that's where you get yeah, to Yeah, like personal play projects more. are really good. And I think some of the reason why I've been feeling dissatisfied more lately is I haven't been giving myself time to do more personal projects. Because I think that's where you sort of discover some things about yourself. When when you guys are all you guys all do uh, do things just on your own for for yourself like do you do you approach those things differently or are you a little, a little bit more relaxed about how you approach a personal project that's just for you or are do you find that you're more like even more of a perfectionist about it just because like you have such little time to do stuff just for you and you want to like make it right uh, is that yeah I mean I, I I get really um, I like doing personal work more. I get m I get more particular about things in it, but I like uh, not having the stakes behind any of it. Like I like being sort of licensed to, to fail on things if I have to. Like I I have a lot of you know bad stories that are written and a lot of like finished drawings that I, that I just stopped doing because at some point it became like 
more taxing than I wanted it to be. And I've I was just been around on many occasions when Sam's <coughs> been working on some personal thing for his own project or whatever, and he'll just come to me and he'll be like, oh, I'm throwing this drawing out <laughs> that I've been spending like two weeks on because <laughs> it's not perfect, and since it's personal, I should make it exactly what it should be. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just seems like a waste. I don't know. Yeah. But like, that's fine, because like the actual process of making it was was you know worthwhile in itself and because there's no stakes at the end like it's not like you know I have to have it sell a certain amount or whatever to make it a worthwhile experience oh, um, uh, Philippa for 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 your work um, it, it really is just very like deeply personal um, and it is uh, do you ever feel um, just I don't know just self-conscious just putting putting that relationship like as the focus point of uh, this major body of work of yours? Um, not really, because I I haven't got anything in there that is, like, I mean, it is personal, because it's obviously about me and Luke, but it's all stuff that I've chosen mm -hmm. to put on there, and it's not like, you know, it's not like some video that's been filming constantly and everything's <laughs> in there. It's like my own selected bits, so, it, so it's all right. But it does, I think it's more like I made, I've made it, and it's, and it reflects what's currently going on. But then I think, you know, what what if me and Luke like split up or we hate each other and then suddenly it will mean something completely different to me. Mm -hmm. So that sort of thing like would worry me or it did worry me when I first put the book out. Mm -hmm. Like in between me drawing it and then it coming out kind of thing. Yeah. And like they the publishers wanted Luke to like sign a form to say it was all right with it coming out and everything, so it's like, okay, I'm being nice to you this week. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't. I feel like it's all right. When I when I first started putting them on Tumblr, I didn't even necessarily mention that they were auto bio. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of people were reading them and didn't actually know that anyway, and would email me and be like, oh, I, you know, I like your characters or something, right. and they didn't know. It was I, I saw a thing on Tumblr where somebody, who, uh, th this couple was cosplaying as uh, Luke and <laughs> Philippa. That was <laughs> weird. Uh, is, is that, is, awesome. I'm sure that's strange. Like, that's how, how, do you strange how do you respond thing to that? Is, my mum phoned me and was like, oh, I saw that picture where you and Luke dressed up like your comic. And I was like, mum, that's not me and Luke. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> is it it's sort of uncanny just seeing other, like your doubles out there? Yes. And did they know that it was like, the, it, the comic is based on real people? I think people, they knew, I think they knew. Were they, okay, they weren't under the assumption that, oh, these are just characters. Like yeah. they, so, so they really were trying to be. It's <laughs> strange, yeah, that's a bit strange. It's nice though. <laughs> Hopefully they're in jail now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a restraining order on all of them. Um, yeah, with uh, do you so um, Luke and Philippa, you, you guys are are in a relationship together, t and Sam and Kelly, you are in a relationship as well. Um, how uh, does that? Uh, do you guys all work in the same space, or do you find time to just like kind of take a break from each other, or? If you're comfortable asking this question, I don't. I don't mean to get all up in your lives. <laughs> we used to work at the same desk. Yeah, we literally used to work at the same table, <laughs> which was, let me tell you, it's much better working in two different spaces now. <laughs> it was less. It was like a little bit shorter than one of these tables, and we'd yeah. just be on opposite ends, just like facing. The only problem with that, well, Sam wanted to watch basketball all the time, and I didn't want to watch basketball all the time. You haven't been converted by his comic? I mean, I like basketball, okay. but like, I just didn't want to, he watches it like 24 seven. <laughs> so. I was maybe too evangelistic. <laughs> but um, it's, I mean, I think it's important when you're both artists working from home that you do have like lives apart from each other. And if you're, I mean, for us, I think we were literally around each other 24 seven, so we never had anything new to talk about, basically. And um, we each sort of have our own studio spaces now. I think being in such close prox proximity as well just sort of um, kind of funneled our work towards each other yeah. a little bit more. And so being apart lets us you know, experience things slightly differently, and so our work is developing more independently. Yeah. Do do all of you feel like 
you've been influenced directly by each other's work? Because I, I, Sam and Kelly, you, uh, your styles and your colors all uh, seem to uh, kind of have that same just very polished look and mm -hmm. vibrant look to them. But uh, Luke and Philip, uh, your your work uh, seems to be uh, just completely different from each other, uh, aside from the work that you do together with the soft spot animations. Um, it, do, you, do you guys feel like you are influenced by each other, or do you try to keep your work away from each other? Um, I don't think it's on purpose that we <coughs> don't make it look the same, but I think they're, I don't know if you'd agree, but like, there are s more like similarities in the way we might try and put a story together, or like would sort of like if I'm working on something, I'll ask Luke what he thinks, or the other way around as well. And it's more like trying to work out whether a joke works or a story works. So that's the sort of thing mm -hmm. that I feel like we help each other with. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like <coughs> I don't know. I, I, was, I feel like, like from the outset, I would have said our work didn't have a lot in common like especially like when I first met you um I felt like we were doing pretty different things but like def definitely like over time I feel like have been influenced more I don't know if I'm talking to you, to <laughs> you <laughs> or her um, I, um but I there's like lots of little things like just the way I doodle now has like changed like some kind of like look that I'll draw like I feel, I feel like I definitely like draw a bit more like you and like I can even remember like the first time, like I've, I've it's like I remember the way I remember like just like noticing the way she holds her pen and like I started like sometimes I'd like draw slightly differently now, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it totally like affects the way I draw sometimes. Um, but yeah, but we like bounce stuff back and forth off each other all the time, um, and there's like lots of little bits in my comics that kind of come from like us just talking, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we're sort of the same <coughs> way. Like if one of us is like, does this look good? <laughs> or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I. it's great to have another person whose like artistic sort of opinions I just trust wholeheartedly, just yeah. available to look at my work from the outside. Even I mean, Sam and I met in college basically because we liked each other's work. <laughs> oh, okay. So. so it all worked out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, she's the first person to read my, you know, drafts, and I help come up with ideas. Yeah. So like, if I'm having a hard time with the concept, I'll talk it out with Sam. Or if he needs color help, I'll like step in and like try some things out. And right. so we like. I'll do thumbnails for you sometimes. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> we'll, like, we'll, like, do, we'll, like, help get the other person started on something, mm -hmm. and if, like, they're having trouble. Yeah. Because it's nice to have a second opinion sometimes. It's good to have that, that support system yeah. just immediately there. Yeah. yeah. Um, when, when you guys are creating your work, um, there's obviously the writing com component to, to your comics. Do you feel like when you are making your illustration work, uh, that the, there's a certain amount of writing involved in, in that in terms of like you're telling you're trying to tell a story with the one image um, do, how much of, of a, how much of that do you of a, like a backstory for whatever illustration you have in your head uh, how much of that is, is, do you come up with before you start like putting it all together or is that something that you come up with as you're as you're doing it for me, that all just comes up as I do it. I feel like things take long enough that, like, <coughs> that like I'll be able to just write a write a whole write a whole novel while I'm working on a single piece, like from start to finish. <laughs> but yeah, nothing is really pre-prepared as far as backstory stuff for single illustrations. Yeah, I don't think I ever have like a backstory in mind for yeah. for an illustration. It's more about so just just putting enough like information in there for mm -hmm. someone to kind of make their own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's on the shoulders of the audience mostly to fill in those blanks. You're yeah. kind yeah, of totally. just leaving hints at what could be the uh, the backstory or whatever of the illustration. Yeah, you just want to make it like as provocative as possible, but not in a saucy way. Just, like <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just want to... Maybe, maybe that can be like your rebellion comic, like yeah. a very <laughs> sexy comic. <laughs> um, I feel like that's been sort of disappointing for people who've, come up, who've like come up to my table and they'll pick out an image that is just sort of like a personal piece and they'll be like, 
what can you like what can you tell me about this piece like do you have a story behind it and I'll just stand there just like <laughs> <laughs> the story is what you make it <laughs> like what do you think it's, yeah, what what do you think you, it's yeah. about yeah that that's what it's about <laughs> yeah um when uh when I was uh, looking through uh, you guys's work uh I noticed that there are some pieces that are just very genre uh heavy um I, I, kn I know Sam you're very big into fantasy stuff and basketball um <laughs> but uh do you uh do you guys feel like the uh when you are working in a genre type thing, do you, is it like a mandate of, are you, are you uh, constricted by, do you feel like you're being constricted by the uh, elements of the genre, or do you feel like this is a chance to kind of like subvert this genre? Like I know, like Sam, you were saying with your fantasy comics, you were kind of tired of seeing high fantasy type things, and you wanted something more like fun or accessible, so you yeah, decided to put Yeah, I out work in a thing. genre, like a genre in which, I don't know, I find probably 70 to 80 percent of it just completely distasteful. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to fit into the 20 percent that like I actually like. Trying to change it from the inside. Yeah, I'm a mole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I'm also into science fiction and fantasy, and um, I do feel like a lot of it fits into a certain box that isn't always fit with what I like. And so I just like drawing in it to like put another perspective in there. Right. Mm. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, um, with, with, uh, with your work, uh, the, the uh, genre, I feel like from what I've seen, uh, you mostly work with the genre type stuff when it's like work for somebody else, like those book covers that you did for those uh, mystery novels or cr uh, crime novels? Oh, the, um, uh, the, the Morde Mordecai yeah. thing. Yeah, or, um, it, how much of that is like the art director saying, hey, let's, uh, let's make this kind of feel from this image, and how much of that is like your interest in the genre, or are you interested in it at all, or is it? No, well, I mean, with that particular job, I mean, they came to me with, you know, it's for those particular books, so it's straight away, it's already in that genre, like I don't really have much to say about it, I can't kind of repackage it as a, as a fantasy novel or something, you know, so that was just the job, um, and yeah, obviously the art director, some art directors have stronger ideas about what they want than others, but for something like that, it's always going to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, but that, well, that particular series was like heavily art directed. Um, yeah, but with like illustration work, it really, <coughs> like, it's, it really is just a matter of what comes to me, you know? Um, and I can kind of direct that to a point by, you know, how I sort of, what work I present in my portfolio, which is kind of what you were talking about yeah. earlier. Um, you can only do so much, like you've still just got to wait for someone to ask you to do something and hope it's something that you're interested in. Yeah. And I guess you can kind of, I kind of feel like I can direct it by the stuff that I genuinely, the stuff, the kind of stuff that I'd like to do more of, I'll just try way harder. Right. Yeah. Have, have, have any of you ever encountered projects that you've been hired for that you just really didn't uh, feel like it was your thing, but um, you, were, you were already in it and like already committed? Like how do you how do you deal with 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 something that you hate? <laughs> <laughs> just, just do it. Just get just on with it, just and, on and with then it. never look back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you just uh, like rush through it and like? Yeah. It, yeah. I feel that never that never works. Any time I'm not enjoying a job, like it's always the ones that drag on and on, and there'll there'll be a million changes, and you can't get out of it. Yeah. You can't. You can never rush those things. <laughs> oh. Sometimes you just have to remind yourself that everybody's money spends the same. <laughs> Um, let's see, we still have some time here. Um, now, uh, I, I, you all are, uh, you've, you've uh, worked in animation, uh, has everybody, all of you have worked in animation at some point, right? Like, I haven't really worked in, like, 
the animation industry or anything. I just I just do animation just by myself, really. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, do you feel like uh, there is a big difference with like a do-it-yourself mentality to animation over a more like I guess polished like studio type thing? Are you trying to achieve something different by that do-it-yourself kind of aesthetic? Or is that just out of the necessity of like the stuff that you have? Yeah, it's like I, I would, I don't think there's any other way for the stuff that I would make mm. to be made. Like it's just got to be me and Luke kind of making that by ourselves. But the the difference when I see Luke do like storyboards for animation and stuff, it definitely seems. I mean, it is like lots of people doing a little bit each rather than just you know me just completing the whole thing by myself and mm -hmm. yeah so that's the main difference really okay uh, have, how, how do you guys feel about uh, working in animation is it uh, is it just another medium to express yourself is it just another job or um, do you prefer animation to uh, <laughs> the illustration in comics um, I don't know if I'd say I prefer it I like as Philip was saying, I mean, each person will do just a little bit of the project, and so that's all I can sort of claim ownership over in on a particular job, an animation job. So like, it's it's harder to be like really proud of the work that you make because it is just a component in a larger project. Um, although like I like all the work I do for animation, and I'm happy with it. It's not like, I mean, I work on Steven Universe, but I don't refer to it as like my show, you know, because <laughs> I just, I just do part of it, so. What do you think, Callie? Yeah, I mean, like, I've done some <coughs> background paintings for Cartoon Network, and it's kind of the same thing, where, like, I felt proud of it, but it wasn't But it's not yours, right? In the way that, like, an yeah. illustration can be. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's, it's like a sense of, like, it's a sense of satisfaction in that you were a part of yeah. a team that did yeah. it together. Great, all right. Well, um, I want to open the floor up to, to questions. If you have a question for anybody on the panel, uh, please come up to the mic in the uh, center aisle there. Um, otherwise, I'm going to pull out bad questions. <laughs> <laughs> no one else wants to ask a question? <laughs> You're very brave to step up there first. Yes. Um, so if you got a freelance job for like an illustration and you had say a one week turnaround, what would like a day in that week look like for you schedule wise? Um, I would probably spend four days working on other jobs to, <laughs> <laughs> to free up the last bit of time. Like I would finish up stuff that I was working on and then I would spend a day on sketches or, or I mean if it's if it's just one week I would spend the first day on sketches send the sketches in and then finish up all my other stuff and then <laughs> see for me like in school I'd always thought like okay a week is that's the time I'm gonna spend a week on a piece this piece took me a week and then in the professional world all the jobs overlap in awkward ways and so that week isn't like not you know, every work day of that week went into the piece. It'll just be like, this is the time that I had to find the time that I needed within it to make the piece. And so, yeah, I'll spend a day on sketches and then probably two days on a final. U usually it doesn't shake out to any more than that. I mean, I'm lucky if I can spend, um, I don't know, more than just two days finishing a piece. Yeah, I feel like that's usually the quickest, or that's like I'll do a, a day for coming up with different sketches and then a day to take the sketches to a color, like a color version, and then the last day to like polish everything up. So, it's, yeah. And you guys get enough sleep doing that? Uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> no problem. Hi. Um, so, I think, I, I'm not sure if you guys already covered this, but like, how exactly did you guys all come to like anything near like animation or the comics world? Um, did you think that that's what you were gonna be doing when you were like 15 or 20, you know, like like years ago? Or were you just like, yeah, comics, like all the time, or like animation all the time, like when you were younger? Well, for me, it was, I, it was, it was I didn't, it was the kind of thing I wanted to be doing when I was a kid. Like, I know that, like, 
it was definitely this was the area I was aiming for, but um, I just kind of like stumbled my way here, um, just by <laughs> just by way of just like drawing, just constantly, and you just you know you go for a few years where I didn't want to do didn't want to do comics. I didn't really like comics. Um, then like I'd remember again, and that the opportunities to actually do that, and then I did, and I'm still kind of doing that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, follow up. I then like so, you just kind of did comics, and then one day somebody appeared and was like, "Here, make a comic for me," or like, did you like go find places where you can make comics? No, well, it's like I, I drew comics as a kid all the time, but then when I went to uni, I studied illustrations. So then for a few years, I was, comics just actually weren't in my head at all. Like I was just planning to be just a full time illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, but then kind of start to figure out that those worlds like overlap and kind of find out about like indie comics and small press comics and you realize there's ways in there and it wasn't like an intentional career path it just started doing that and then work started to come in that would sometimes it was comic stuff and sometimes it was illustration stuff and yeah it's all kind of built itself cool um and anyone else on the panel um, well, I, I did animation at university, and before that, it was like I didn't didn't really know, like, exactly what I wanted to do, but would just do loads of drawings and stuff all the time, and then just like one thing after another, eventually chose to do animation, and then after that, sort of ended up making comics because it was like an easier way to tell stories, <laughs> like a lot less sort of. <laughs> frames to do <laughs> yeah uh, but now I'm sort of getting back into animation after like a, about five years of only doing comics so sort of still doing both now I also got into comics because it was easier than doing <laughs> 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 I didn't like I didn't really grow up on comics I grew up with video games and uh, I can't make one of those by myself <laughs> like quietly without anyone asking me to but I can do that for a comic so that was sort of how I kind of pushed my way in. Uh, hey, um, Sam, you mentioned that uh, you weren't a fan of uh, a lot of like sci-fi fantasy material out there, um, and I just wanted to know what you all sort of like to read in terms of like sci-fi fantasy books or like movies or games or anything like that. Um, I really like Ursula Le Guin's uh, fantasy books, mm -hmm. The Earth Sea Cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like Gene Wolfe, uh, Book of the New Sun is one of my favorite books. It's a super, super dense, like, future fantasy story. I um, love it. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, uh, what do you like, Callie? I mean, I'm only thinking of recent books that I've read. Ancillary Justice is a really fun sci-fi book. Um, Hild is a really sort of interesting historical, almost kind of fantasy. Yeah. Um, what else have we read lately? Just Joe Amber Girl Me. Just going through books in my head and thinking, like, oh, do I, like, would I recommend that? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We've both been, like, busy a lot lately, so we haven't been able to read as much as we'd like. Yeah, I've been reading Berserk lately. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, Berserk is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Sorry, just want to chime no, in there. I love that's Berserk. Why, like, I've been uh, I've been working on a, on really tight deadlines, and so uh, I need like stress release kind of stuff. And so, anytime that I find myself flagging in a in in a job, I'll just like burn through like a, a volume of Berserk. Like uh, it's just like really light reading. <laughs> um, so I'll just read like 260 pages of like just people getting chopped in half. <laughs> Weird sort of body stuff. transformations. <laughs> and oh yeah, just the most yeah. vile, like miserable comics. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So simple question: What's each of your favorite color? Do you want to go down the line? Your favorite color? Uh, yellow. Uh, uh red. <laughs> <laughs> Orange? <laughs> really? I don't know, it changes. <laughs> Green. <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I have 
two questions. One's awkward and one's nerdy. Do you have a preference? You don't care? Okay. Um, so, awkward? Okay. Awkward yeah. first. So, awkward is, I've noticed a lot of people of color and a lot of diversity in the slideshow that was going, and I was wondering if that was something that, you know, that you did yourself, or was it something an art director or somebody asked you to do? That's like, both a concern of ours. Yeah, we're both really concerned about representation and being able to, like, show a variety of people so we both try to I mean I know with us we're like always thinking about that with our work that's part of the reason I don't like a lot of the fantasy, yeah. fantasy genre <laughs> yeah. okay. because it's very one dimensional it's a lot of white guys <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot of books about white guys written by white guys for white guys and so as as a white guy <laughs> I, have to, I have to be a little more sensitive to what I'm putting into the into the pool you know yeah, well, one thing I always think about, just like in terms of illustration, like if if, if it doesn't specify, if you've got to have like a character in there, like if it doesn't specify that they have to be anyone in particular, I just try and like not make it a white man. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's... Consider what the, what the default is. Yeah. And sometimes they like push back and they'll like, they'll ask and then you have to have this awkward conversation, but yeah. like, I feel like you've got to do it. I just started drawing women for all of my like illustrations because that was what I wanted to draw and who I identified with. So unless I'm asked to do otherwise, I usually just do that. I was just curious about that. And um, the other nerdy question is, I mean, a lot of the artwork that all of you do kind of lends itself to be like little tiny worlds to explore. And I see that in uh, video games. I know that you're just touching on that, but have you guys ever been approached or been ever thought about doing a video game? Listen, I know it's like I feel like it's like a cousin to animation, so it's all right. Yeah, I, can yeah, I mean, I'm I'm open to it, and I'd like to do it at some point. But um, it is another one of those like part of the team kind of mm -hmm. things, um, and uh, I like being responsible for all of the work in a in a piece, and so. For me, doing comics is like the way that I can do every part of it myself. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do it sometime in the future. I mean, I worked as a concept artist right when I was out of school at a video game company, and that actually kind of made me not want to work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. It's a lot, it's a lot of work um, to put together something like that, and you are working on a team. Um, and I sort of liked being able to make my own selfish decisions for my illustrations versus having to do something that like everyone is doing, but it's fun. Thank you, mm -hmm. unless you have something to say. Yeah, well, I would, it's really appealing to me because I love video games, I, I love the idea of it, but I can't see myself being able to do it. Like. I mean, if someone asked me and had confidence that I'd be able to do do it, then I'd love to. But I, I can't. I wouldn't even know where to start. But I mean, I, I do love video games. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be like really. It would obviously be really cool to get to like, you know, like just art direct a video game and like come up with just the concept and the idea, and then some other someone else makes it. But I don't think that ever <laughs> <laughs> that ever works like that. Yeah, just do all yeah. the all the fun bits. Yeah. 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 And like people do. This, it seems like there would be more scope for that now with like the amount of indie games that are being made um, don't require such like a huge like infrastructure but I think the people who make those are usually people who have like coding knowledge and are actually hands on putting it together so I, d I don't think there's really that much scope for just a, an illustrator to come <laughs> in and just to, <laughs> to <laughs> tell people what to do. Yeah, I thought there was for, for a minute because Ali Moss is doing like Firewatch. And yeah. so I, I thought, like, whoa, this is like Ali's going to be in there and he's just going to art direct this thing and it's going to be awesome. And then he'll just tweet about like, oh, look, I rendered, I rendered like, yeah. like 10 different radios today. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. So uh, on a small team, like you do have to pick up a lot of the different jobs. So it's, there isn't just like, room for someone to just come in and push people around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we, we have time for one more Thank you. question sure. there. Are you guys fans of anime? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everybody loves anime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for
Thank oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for coming.